We've heard about the importance of uh, sustainable intensification of agricultural production and of healthier diets. The third leg of the food security stool is addressing food poverty, which we can define here by the UK Department of Health as the inability to afford or to have access to food that makes up a healthy diet. Now, normally we think about that kind of problem of food poverty as something associated with the global south, the areas in red. But I want to extend our geographical imaginations and focus here on the global north, using the UK highlighted there in green as an example to illustrate the points I want to make. So an index developed by the Food and Agriculture Organization uses a questionnaire of eight questions to map food insecurity uh, across the globe, from mild to moderate to severe food insecurity, trying to identify those populations across the globe who are experiencing it in some form. The question of what is the problem is very often, in important ways, also a question of where is the problem. Here we are in Barrow in Furness, a classic post-industrial city in the northwest of England, where the jobs have gone, the services have gone, the shops have gone, uh, and this is a classic location for food insecurity. So getting from what's the problem to where's the problem um, uses a whole series of new uh, geographical data analysis techniques. One proficient in this is the Oxford professor, McKinder Professor of Geography, Danny Dawling, who uses digital cartography of this kind, where you've got a distortion of Western Europe, enlarges the areas with the most population, uh, reduces those with the smallest, and we can see those purple areas, more than 25% of the population live in poverty. And that includes not just Southern Europe, but also London. So let's think about three different kinds of um, manifestations of food poverty uh, in the global north. Here we have, first of all, the location of food deserts. That is, nearly two million people who live too far and have no access to their own transport to actually access commercial sources of healthy food. Or the rise in the use of food banks. Here we have the growth, particularly following the black line, in the numbers of children uh, who live in households below the poverty line that are increasingly dependent on accessing food through food banks, that is, non-commercial delivery of foodstuffs. Or well, here's another classical piece of digital cartography of London boroughs. The, the map on uh, the right-hand side from your view uh, shows those in dark blue, three boroughs, where the largest number of children, over 40%, rely for their main nutritional source on free school meals. So a major organisation in the UK called Feeding Britain has tried to draw our attention to thinking about food poverty through four pillars. Yes, feeding people, food banks, and some of the examples I've shown, but also thinking about alternative forms of food supply, thinking about the logistics, and finally, thinking about skills. One of the key areas where we can really start to develop redistribution of surplus foodstuffs is through food waste. Most of the initiatives are in the green box, that's retailers. Um, the area we'd really like to tackle is manufacturing, that is the red box, that's about 14% of food waste. Some examples of what's already being done. This is a nationwide organization called Foodshare, which is one of the largest food bank uh, organizations in the UK, delivering recycled food materials in locations in need. Another good example is Food Cycle. This is a, an organization, again national, that specializes in delivering prepared foods, cooked meals to areas of need around the UK and runs a national scheme to do that, again using recycled surplus food primarily from supermarkets. So the question or the challenge we have is that there's now a plethora of different kinds of geographical data systems, geographical information systems, digital cartography, logistical systems with software and a whole range of things that are barely starting to be harnessed yet uh, to, to better address food poverty issues. One early example is the Trussell Trust, here working with a GIS team in Hull in the UK to try to maximize the location of new food banks. But imagine if we could get real-time data on um, harvested crops, what's never going to get into the commercial food system because it doesn't meet the standards, and being able to then directly redistribute that um, to areas of need. Thank you.